Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and today we're doing a forced copper patina on all this stuff to make a forced copper patina EDC. Now, this knife is an Olight knife, or an O knife, the Freeze 2. Actually, all this stuff is from Olight. Um, they do a bunch of different stuff in copper. They actually do have a sale, I believe, on these knives. Here's another one right here. Um, I'll link everything I can down in the description if you wanna maybe get yourself a copper um, EDC, whether you want it raw or maybe possibly to patina in the future. But uh, but yeah, everything will be linked down in the description. Now, so first step, we have our raw copper. I do have to take all this stuff apart. Okay, now that we have all the parts separate, these pivot collars, I did take them out. They were a little bit tough. They're pretty tightly fit that go right inside there, but it's gonna look really good when it's all done with those being also blue accents because this force patina is gonna add some blue to it. Now, as far as the flashlight goes, not much I can do about it. It is a rechargeable flashlight. I like the flashlight a lot, but it does have a, I'm a, a little sealer right there that I'm hoping will keep it protected. So if I screw it all the way in, it gets bright. I'll just back it out and I'm just gonna use it like that. Hopefully everything works out good. Okay, now you don't have to do this part, but I'm running my scales on the strap. These are already pretty shiny, but I'm cleaning the surface of these really well. Now you do want to clean them, make sure they're very cleaned with alcohol, make sure they're nice and dry, make sure they don't have any fingerprints or anything like that on there, they will show up. But as of right now, I'm just kind of polishing the surface of the scales and you can see the difference between the two after just a few seconds of me rubbing them on a strop. I started with a nine micron, went to six micron and then three micron. I'm not done yet. Um, same thing with this piece, it's a little bit rough so I probably won't spend too much time on this one but regardless, depends on how much work you really wanna put in but the more polished it is, the better. So it's up to you. Items you will need. You will need a sealed container of some sort with a lid, clear ammonia, rock salt. I'm using kosher, but rock salt, paper towels, and clear, a clear coat. So I will link all this stuff down in the description. Now, take pieces of paper towel and just crumple them up and toss them at the bottom of your container. You don't have to think too much about it, kind of fluff them up. Now there's different ways to do this. Different people have different methods. Um, but this is just going to be mine. We are going to soak these with the ammonia here in a second, so it's okay if it fluffs up a little bit. It'll wind up uh, compressing here in a second. So after we have it kind of fluffed up, because I'm looking for areas to kind of poke up higher in other areas, so when I lay the scale down, there'll be gaps in places. Some people like to take their scales and actually put stuff on the scale to make the exact pattern they want. I want mine to be extremely natural. So now I'll take my ammonia and this stuff has a very strong smell to it. So be careful breathing it in and soak the paper towels. Next, take your salt, pop the cap and sprinkle a whole bunch on all over the place. That's plenty. Now I should have mentioned this, but you're gonna want some gloves because you're gonna wanna make sure you do one final cleaning and make sure none of your fingerprints are on the copper. You're even gonna wanna spray it with alcohol because your skin the oils from your skin is what patinas the copper so you want to make sure there's a, there's absolutely no oils from your skin on these otherwise it could show up during the process and now I'm going to lay down each one 
in a spot. I'm not going to push it down at all. I'm just going to lay them down. Very gently. And I'm going to see this one's going to get double sided. So I might have to do that by itself. Let me, this one I'm going to have to spin too. So I might have to do this one a little. You know what? What we'll do? We're going to take some paper towels and cover this now. So I got these balls soaked in the ammonia. And I'm going to sprinkle. Whoops. I'm going to sprinkle some rock salt on the paper towel itself and just kind of lay it on the surface. And now seal it. And I'm going to wait this out even longer than I typically would before I check. Now, because here's the thing. Very important. A lot of times what happens is you check it too early. And if you lift it and, and move it around, you're going to stop it from being at its most beautiful. And I mean that because even though you'll you'll take it out and you'll look at it or you'll flip it and it'll look really, really good. But once you put it back down, its pattern is going to end up differently now. If you just leave it for like six, eight hours, it will get a really good coating with really bright copper still. Now, like I said, some people like to put like a clear coat or like clear nail polish, wax, things like that in a certain pattern so that those that part of the copper doesn't patina. I'm doing it in a, just a natural way. Whatever patinas, patinas. Whatever doesn't, doesn't. All right, so we are all done and it's all put back together. Now the clip, the reason why I did not do the clip is because it is steel. It's just a, a copper coating of some sort. So I could not do the clip, but the coin, you guys are probably wondering about the coin. Where's the coin? Well, the coin was not real copper either. Um, I don't know what it is. It's not magnetic, but it's definitely not real copper. So it came out like crap but these all came out really really nice i made this side obviously a little bit darker i wound up uh, letting it sit a little bit longer now a couple things i want to mention that i did not mention in the beginning is that when you do the clear coat you're probably going to want some type of tack cloth or like a 5,000 grit sandpaper. After you put the first layer of clear coat on, you can scuff up the, the coating just a little bit and then lay your second coat on. It'll help it adhere a lot better so it doesn't chip off. Um, you don't want to do it before that because you'll wind up taking off the, the very colors you're trying to keep on there. So... Put your first coating of clear coat on there, then hit it with the tack cloth or like 5,000 grit sandpaper, just really lightly, then spray your second coating on there. After you obviously, uh, you know, clean it off. But they came out really, really good. I'm very, very happy with them. And the one thing that I probably would have done a little differently this time, every time I do this, which I've done this a bunch of times, I always learn like something else that I maybe could have done a little bit better or something like that. Um, I might have layered 
the or flipped the scales face up instead of face down and I would have scrunched up the paper towel. I would have sprinkled the salt on top of the scales face up, then soaked the paper towel in, you know, soaked paper towels, and then I would have laid them down on top of the salt facing up. Um, I think the air would have gotten to it a little bit better inside the container, and it probably would have patina brighter colors. I believe I did that the last time just like that, and the brighter blues came out, and the copper didn't patina as fast in the areas that turned kind of darker brown. So it was mostly just super bright blues and then super bright coppers. But anyways, now you can, if you wind up, you know, getting it too dark and you want to get some more brighter copper colors out of it, you can take rust remover. It's um, it's just a, oh, sorry, rust eraser. You can use a rust eraser. You take a rust eraser and you can just scrub the areas before you ever put the clear coat on. Figure out the little patterns you want to clean off a little bit and you can use the rust eraser on those patterns clear it off reveal some little copper areas and then obviously rinse it off then let it dry then clear coat it this one i kind of wish i would have hit i never i did not hit the flashlight with any of the rust eraser i wish i would have a little bit in a couple areas and brought out some really bright coppers but hey it's all good i'm not that worried about it, it still works great very happy with it comes apart really good and I didn't do anything to stop it or protect it or anything like that. I just went with it. So um, it came out really good. If you guys are interested in anything from this video, everything will be linked down in the description, including all these little parts and all these little things. These are all old light parts. So they always have sales running. Um, I'm not sure if they have a sale going ex this exact moment right now. I know they did have one going on the knives. I'm not sure if it's still going. Um, they also have the, the carbon fiber version, but awesome awesome knife um i definitely like it even more now but you can do this with anything copper so as long as it's real copper you can get away with doing this and i think it's a cool little fun very very easy thing to do at home you know doing a forced patina it's not like this takes a lot of work or you know uh, you know a ton of effort like it's super easy so anybody could do it you could do it with your you know like if you have kids at home or something like you could do it with them it's just it's an awesome little project but there you guys go i love you guys thank you guys for watching peace